When we were discussing static NAT and dynamic NAT, we always had a one-to-one -one mapping between an inside local address and an inside global address. What if we have a larger number of inside local addresses as opposed to the available inside global addresses that we have? Well, we can do PAT, P-A-T, Port Address Translation. A really common use of PAT is in home networks. You've got a cable modem or you've got a DSL modem, and your internet service provider gives you a single publicly routable IP address. And you might have multiple devices inside of your home. You might have a gaming system, tablets, smartphones, laptops, PCs, and all of those devices inside of your network, they need to share this one publicly routable inside global address. How does that work? Well, Pat is going to keep track of port numbers. For example, when we're connecting to a web server running HTTP, do you recall what the common port number is to which we're sending traffic? It's port 80, isn't it? Check this out. PC1 is trying to communicate with the web server, and its destination address is 3.3.3.3 using port number 80. That's the well-known port number for HTTP. Now, the source address, it also has a port number. We've got a source address of 10.1.1.101, and we're using an ephemeral port number. Remember, that was a port number greater than 1,023. In this example, we're saying it's 44.252. Well, R1 is going to translate that into our inside global address with its own port number. Notice the source address is 4.4.4.4. That's the only inside global address we have. But we're going to keep track of that port number of 4096, meaning that when we get return traffic coming back in from that web server, guess where it's going to be destined? That's right, it's going to be destined for port number 4096. And R1, because it keeps track of the port number information, it's going to know that that's destined for this session on PC1. Notice what happens when PC2 contacts the very same web server. PC2 comes in with a source address of 10.1.1.102 with its own ephemeral port number. In this case, we're saying it's 17116. The destination address, though, is the same. The destination port number is the same. And when we perform PAT, which is, by the way, also known as NAT overloading on this packet, Router R1 is going to give it a source address of 4.4.4.4 with a source port number of 4097, meaning that when return traffic is coming back in from the web server, this return traffic is going to be destined for 4.4.4.4, but it's also going to be destined for a specific port number, 4096 or 4097, and Router R1 is going to know how to translate the destination address for that incoming packet into an appropriate inside local address, like we see here on the table. Again, the key is we're keeping track not just of IP address information, we're keeping track of port number information. That's how we can distinguish between multiple flows. We can now support multiple devices even if they're all sharing the same IP address as their inside global IP address. There is a limit to this, by the way. Since a port number value is a 16-bit value, that's going to limit us to around 65,000 different flows that we can support per inside global address. And like we said, we could have more than one inside global address and still do PAT. PAT is useful for when we have more inside local addresses as compared to our inside global addresses. Let's see how to set this up using this topology. We're going to begin our configuration of PAT much the way we began our configuration of static NAT and dynamic NAT, and that is by specifying our inside and outside NAT interfaces. Let's go into interface fast to the NAT 0 slash 0 and say IP NAT inside interface fast to the NAT 0 slash 1, that's outside, we'll say IP NAT outside. And just like we did with dynamic NAT, we're going to use an access control list, an ACL, to say what is our subnet that's inside of the network? What subnet defines our inside local addresses? Let's say access list 1, permit, and in our case, it's 10.1.1.0. We've got a 24-bit subnet mask, but remember when we're creating an access control list, we don't use a subnet mask, we use a wildcard mask. So we'll say 0.0.0.255. Now we need to say that the inside local addresses matched by this access control list, they're all going to be translated into a single IP address assigned to interface fast ethernet 0 slash 1. Here's how we do that. We say IP NAT inside source 
list 1, referring to access control list 1, and we're going to say those inside local addresses that match access list 1 that we just created, we're going to translate those into a single IP address on interface fast ethernet 0 slash 1. But we're not done just yet. If we pressed enter now, only one inside local address will be translated into our inside global address of 4.4.4.4, but if we want multiple inside local addresses to share that same IP address, we need to do PAT or NAT overloading. To do that we give the keyword of overload. And now we've configured PAT. Let's go verify the configuration. If I go to PC1, let's emulate a web connection to our web server. What we can do is say Telnet using not port 23 that Telnet commonly uses, but Telnet to port 80 to the web port. Let's say Telnet 3.3.3.3 to port 80. And it actually opens because I enabled the IP HTTP service on the router acting as the web server. Let's go to PC2 and do the same thing. Let's do Telnet to 3.3.3.3 on port 80. And we've got sessions open on both of our PCs. Let's go back to R1 and check our translations. Let's do a show IP NAT translations. And we can see that we have two translations going on right now. They're both destined for the same outside global address, the same web server at 3.3.3.3 on port 80. And here's PC1 at 10.1.1.101. And we see its ephemeral port of 26450. And notice that the router is keeping track of port number information. So even though the inside global address is the same, for PC1 and for PC2, the way the router knows that one incoming packet goes to PC1 and another incoming packet goes to PC2 is that the port numbers are different. By assigning different port numbers, the router is able to translate a packet coming in to 4.4.4.4 on port 4096. It's able to translate that into PC1's IP address, 10.1.1.101, using the ephemeral port picked by PC1, and the same thing for PC2. This is an example of how we configure NAT overloading, also known as PAT, Port Address Translation.